cold forming today. So, so what are some advantages of cold forming? You don't have to have a big ass oven? Yeah. <laughs> no heat. No heat required, so you don't have to pay for an oven, you don't have to pay to run the oven. You don't have to pay for the high expensive tooling. There's probably some kind of a permit. Yeah, also all the environmental insurance. issues with the heat, um, worker safety, all that. So that's, that's a big one. What else? Handle stress. What? Handle stress. What, what do you mean? Handle you. pressure. Yeah, you can handle some, some pressure and it's not going to do other stuff. Is that what you're trying to say? Like, you know, bend better? Yeah. Yeah. So it's not going to get do something that you don't want it to do? Is that, is that what you're going for? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, so. Um. <laughs> but also with the stress, what happens? Does it, when you're bending something, does it, do you add stress to it when you bend it cold? Remember with heat, you don't add any stress to it, but when you bend it when it's cold, do you add stress to it? Yes. Yeah, you add some stress to it. So what does that do? It weakens it in certain areas. Well, it makes it harder, right? Yes. But it also can weaken it. It's like when you're bending aluminum sheet metal, you have to really, really specific about watching what radius is you use to bend it. Because if you bend it too sharp, it'll crack. Um, but if you bend it good, at a good radius, then it, it won't. Um, what can you do to relieve those stresses? So if you want to get rid of the stress you added by cold working it, how can you do it? Yeah, you can temper it, right? Or you warm it up a little bit and then cool back down. <coughs> so um, what are some other advantages? Hmm. No uh, cool down period. It's faster yeah. for production. Yeah, faster. Faster between processes. What else? Closer what tolerances. Easier yeah. to handle. Yeah, closer tolerances because it's not going to have to cool down and shrink. <coughs> so. What did you say, Oscar? The handling process, you don't have to... Yeah. Yeah, there's no... No... Safe, no... Wait for it. Yeah. So you can More just grab it. Like high heat. Yeah. Anything. So that kind of went into this one. So it's, it's easier to work with. Any other real advantages? Instrument the wise. Think about it. Are you just talking about the yeah. cold form tonight? Yeah. So we kind of talked about that up here. Stress. That um, your your compact compact units are adding a little bit of strength to the to, to it. What about disadvantages? So that would be some of the stress also, right? Because you have to do something with it sometimes um, if you want to release from that stress. Can't be big objects, like big thick pieces of metal. Yeah, it has to. That can't be thick. Oh yeah, more forces. More forces applied to make it too. Can't be thick. So you can use cheaper dies, but you have to use bigger equipment to, to, to bend it. What else? So, some things can't be. Cool. 
Bible form. What about when the book says um, duck towel or something like that? Duck, duck, duck What's duck towel mean? What's duck towel mean? We kind of ductile is how flexible it is. So because it's not as ductile when it's cold, that makes you do other stuff. Um, any other disadvantages? Ceramics, can you take a piece of glass and bend it? Sure, you can. <laughs> so, so, so it's limited to, to metals. Don't forget the wear on the, uh, on the machine. Oh, yeah, so. Less wear on the yeah, guys. Some, some more wear. Also, there's probably uh, your equipment probably doesn't have to have <coughs> as much strength to bend something. Actually, no, it has to have more. When because when it's, because it's when it's hot, hot or when it's cold, oh. it's not as, as That's ductile. That's what I'm saying, when it's hot. Oh, for hot. Oh, we're talking about this is disadvantages. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have to use more force when it's hot. It has more wear, not from the heat, but from the material not wanting to give. So what do we mean when it says to be clean free of scale? What, what scale? Debris. What? Debris. Yeah, remember when you heat up metals, you get the oxidation and... And the, uh, the, the stuff that forms on the crust of it, that's the scale. So when you cold form it, you don't get any of that. So it's clean when you're done it. Just like it is when you come in, that's how it is when you're done with it. You're not oxidizing it, so you don't, you're not tempting it to rust um, with steels. What about the distorted part of grain? What? And the book said the grain structure of the metal so is distorted. So that, that was the stress. The stress part. So, what were some ways that we saw that we could cold form metals? That was most of it, right? Yes. So, what are some ways we can cold form metals? Very stretching. Careful. What? Stretching. Stretching. Uh, I don't know. Dies. Press what? breaking. Yeah, we had rolling. Press breaking. Rolling. We had bending. What else? Shaking. Yeah, we have, we have stamping. But that was a McCoy machine, right? And and then also what about the uh, punching. What else? What about the pants? What was that? Was that lathe? Lathe? It was on a lathe, but they weren't cutting it on a lathe. They were. Doing what? Forms. Yeah, all these are forming. What? What was the the pots and pans? What? What process was that? Turning. No. Now, turning is cutting it on the lathe. What's? What was it? What were they doing to the metal? Stretching it. Before they started <laughs> reshaping it, but what did they do to the metal? Heat it. No, he didn't. Cold, cold form. form. Well, for friction. <laughs> for friction, right? I'm going to walk out of here. <laughs> okay. When they first turned on the lathe, what happened to the metal? Spun. It's spun. It's spun. It's spinning. <laughs> no, that's the name of the process. <laughs> Spinning. So, I think next week we'll talk about turning. Um, but on, uh, so we had rolling, bending, stamping, punching, and spinning. Any other ones? Those are the, the main ones for metals, right? <clears throat> so, rolling, we have just sheet rolling, but we also have the roll forming. So, what does that do? What 
What does roll forming do? Lines it out. Shape. Symmetrical shape. It could, right? It could end up. You could roll form a piece of flat into a tube, right? And then just weld the seam. Um, so, what are some things that you might be able to, to do with what to do with roll forming besides the corrugated roofing? A tape measure, maybe could use that to form the arc in it. What else? Those cool snap on wristbands. Yeah, that's yeah, same thing as tape measure. <laughs> <laughs> that's the second time I've done it. Um, what about um, structural channels? Yeah. Yeah. So something that might look like that. Metal studs. Metal studs. Because it'll take a flat piece and just kind of through progressive dies, shape into the shape you want. <clears throat> Can we have notches and stuff along it? What about sure. all this roofing up here? Yeah, T-bar roofing. Actually, this is probably an extrusion. Yeah, it's one piece on the bottom, so that's probably an extrusion. <clears throat> but we could also make it so that Good stamp holes in it, right? So they, while they're roll forming it, they can stamp it. So, or, or punch it, because that, that's, we'll say punch. The stamping is a little bit different. But they can punch holes in it as they're rolling it, so it comes out with the shape and with holes and stuff in it. So. What, what's some things you need to know about when you're designing this new roll form? Well, what's the, the most basic thing about it? What bends you can make. Or yeah, well, bends. And you can, you can make a lot of bends to get to the final shape. You can run it through two times if you need to. <clears throat> but what's the, the big thing that you know is going to be the same every time, no matter what shape it is? Thickness. The thickness, right? You got a uniform thickness? That's true of most of these, that the thickness is going to stay the same. <clears throat> so, whenever you're doing this, you need to think about that. Um, what about bending? So, what type of bending? Yeah, so we have, um, what was that one that they showed? Break, the break press? Yeah, brake press. It's a V die, so you've got a die with a V in there, and a die. Like that, that presses down into it to bend the metal. They also have dies that look like that. They're called goosenecks. What do you think that's for? When you, get, when you have like shape, like shape that already. Because yeah, if you have something that's long, that's going to be long here, it's going to go in there and it needs some space. Use the gooseneck. So now that piece, once it bends, can do that. Would that be the same thing for air bending? Like what? Like that same process? Yeah, air bending. Because this doesn't bottom out. It just kind of goes down the depth that it needs to get the angle. But now you can get that longer flange here. So you can have narrower to, to longer. That ratio can be different than if it was a straight up die. Um, so, with bending, we're usually doing sheet metal. Every time you do a 90 degree bend, you're adding strength to it.
Yes, packaging is for my stove. There's the corners of the stove. And so you can you can't bend this. Because all of those bends. So each bend needs yeah. Every 90 degree bend adds strength. And so when you're doing sheet metal, that's something to think about is you got a long piece, if you do some bends, you'll add, add strength to it. <coughs> Well, sometimes you'll see it where they have a sheet, and I'll have two kind of bends that way just a little bit, because even that little bit will give it some strength to it. That's called a cross break. <clears throat> That's all why a lot of times it will come down and do that. So now we've got three 90 degree bends right there. What other benefit does that give you? What advantage does it give you? Yeah, what advantage does, does this shape here give you? You don't have a sharp edge. Yeah, there's no sharp edge. So this one, it's called a hem. It's usually that smashed flat, so it's called a hem. Um, so what do you, when you're doing sheet metal, what do you have to watch out for? What happens when you bend it? <laughs> what happens when you bend it? It stretches. It stretches. So you have to know that when you're making the flat pattern. Because you design it bent up, and then when you unfold it, it's going to be smaller than it is when it's done. Um, I thought you lose metal when you when you bend it, you lose length, right? Yeah, you lose total, but because draw. Whatever. Does the center of it stay the same length? This side gets shorter, that side gets longer. Uh, so there's all kinds of nice calculations to go into for how much it's going to bend. And in 25, we'll do some basics of it. So like, uh, Inventor has that case. Yep, yeah, it does. It, it, Inventor, SolidWorks, they do it for you. And you don't have to make sure that the, cap, the factor that you're giving it for the K factor is the same as what your, your things have. Because depending on what radius your die is and the size of this die, it could change. <clears throat> so you want to make sure that the factor you're using is the right one for your shop. Um, but also, that's a good thing. So at this tip, there's a radius that you're being, so that gives you that inside radius. <clears throat> What's the general rule of thumb for that? General rule of thumb is your inside radius should be the same as the thickness of your material. Steel, you can get away with with going smaller. Aluminum shouldn't go smaller ever, and maybe one and a half times the the material thickness. The inside radius. So the radius of this here should be the same as that, at least. Um, yeah, sometimes with, with aluminum or with steel, you can get by with bending it sharp. <clears throat> aluminum, never. It'll, it'll, it'll crack on you. And it also depends on the type of aluminum. What was that, AJ? AJ, you got something? No, um, So, what else should we think about when you're designing something that's going to be bent? So you're designing it when it's already been up, what should you watch out for? The, the size of the material that you can start out with and you can use on your, your, your brakes. Also, what else? You need to make sure that when it unfolds, it actually unfolds and it doesn't cross over each other. Because
bad one, but you do. Well, if I had thin lines there, that'd be a, a box and open top, right? So depending on what you're doing, if I wanted something to stick out, so that would give me a box, something like that. Something like that. But what if I wanted this side to give me a piece that stuck out, and then I wanted a piece to stick out, stick out here, too. That would mean it stick out there and stick out there. So we could design it so that in the bent view, like that, two pieces. But here they the cross. And so that's kind of an extreme example, but you kind of have to watch out for that. Also down here in the corner, where the bend line is, usually you want your bend lines to be kind of, you want some extra space there. Why do you think you want to do that and not have your bend line right at the corner? Yeah, because here, now this can be part of, because this is the middle of your bend. And so if you had your bend right at the corner, it's going to tear into here when you try to bend it. But if you have it out here, then that, this could be part of the bend. So when it, it's bent up, if I'm looking down the top of that. have a little bit of a pocket there at the bottom and then you just weld that corner or you can have these two kind of that so how you make those meet kind of changes so that's something to watch out is what what do you want that corner to look like and then how are you going to weld it or are you just going to leave it leave it natural <coughs> So, um, so then what's punching? We'll do punching first. Like dimple buys and stuff? What? Dimple buys? No. Sorry, I didn't hear. The dies. Yeah. Dimple dies. Dimple dies. So making holes, making slots, stuff like that, right? Um, you can dimple die, you mean like bending it out? Yeah. So that's actually punching. can be done on a punch, but that's called embossing. So in embossing, what we have, we have material thickness, but then we kind of do another shape like that. So now our material, instead of being straight, does something like that. But now it's still the same thickness all the way through. We just added a dimple or, or a rib. So instead of doing the cross break, we can have our piece and punch a rib into it. So basically you take it like a steel rod, you set it up and you push on it. <clears throat> and so it just kind of dimples down into it. You get the same kind of a shape. And so that adds strength to it. Because now you've got four 90s. You've got 90 here, there, there, and there. So that adds a lot of strength to it. You see it on like angle gussets and stuff where um, it's sheet metal like that. And they've got a, a gusset there that's a rib. And they do that all the time out of sheet metal. Um, and then stamping kind of combines punching and bending all in one. So if you're stamping it, usually you start with a flat piece, and in one process, you punch some holes and you bend it at the same time. Okay? Questions? So question on these types. So then with powders, we saw one method of doing powder, right? So they, they used it to kind of try a, a kind of a frame with the stainless steel powder. 
and then they melt a bronze and it went into it. We can also do it where you just press it together like a pill. So you can have a shape of what it is. So like bearings are done this way. They'll, they'll take a powder and they'll press it into the, the shape. And they'll do what's called sintering, where they'll bring it up to like 70% of the melting temperature. So if it melts, if it melts at 1,000 degrees, they'll bring it up to 700 degrees. So it doesn't melt it, but it's enough that the, that the materials kind of bond together more, and so they'll actually stay together. So that's how they can have bearings that have like, um, like impregnated, impregnated bearings with like graphite impregnated into the bronze and the brass, so that they're long running and stuff like that. That's how they'll, that's how they'll do that. Um, small gears, stuff like that. Okay, so that's centering. Um, also, that we're the we said we're not going to get one of those metal printers here, but if you go to shape weights, this is a three D printing company. So you upload your STL and. have it made out of any of these materials, out of stainless, aluminum, glass, sandstone, a couple different types of plastics, acrylics, uh, silver. So you can pick which of these materials, and that's the price per cubic centimeter. Huh? For it. <laughs> so, wow. Stainless steel? Let's see what that is. Wow. So a door knob is down, cost you 1200 bucks. Uh, so, corner door knob, we make it for $1,200. I'll just go to the store and just get it for $9.99. Do one cubic inch, um, then two cubic centimeters. So, one cubic inch is 16 cubic centimeters. <laughs> so, on our machines, it's about $5 cheaper inch for material. And so, if you take their number and multiply it by 16, that's what you get oh, there per, per cubic inch. So that's, I, hope they, I hope they can make small. 160 bucks a cubic, cubic inch, right? Wow. 160 bucks. Yeah, 160. Yeah. Per cubic inch. I, I hope they can make small cubic inch. detailed items. 160 bucks. Or something just a cubic inch. <laughs> yeah. So uh, ours uh, runs a lot good. less than going here, but we don't have the variety of stuff. Um, they've also got stuff that people already designed that you can just have you print out for whatever that price is. So, what's that called? What? Shapeways. And I'll put the link on the website. That's crazy. So, any questions on cold forming? Oh, all right.